Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and today we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite genuses of coral, the Sarcophytons. You know, devil hands and toadstool leathers. To begin with, when I show the close-up videos, you're gonna see some flatworms in this tank. They're just here, they don't hurt the coral, and I've heard enough people crash in their tanks with flatworm eggs that I'm just not willing to risk it. But they don't hurt the coral. So now on to the coral. Devil hand and toadstool leathers are really similar corals. In fact, they share the same genus, and that's Sarcophyton. In general, the care requirements for toadstool leathers and devil hands are about the same, and they're really easy corals to take care of. In fact, they are some of the best beginner corals out there. They love light, they love flow. There's a common misconception in the hobby that leathers really don't need that much light and don't need that much flow. But if you take the time to acclimate these guys to a lot of light and flow, you will be rewarded. They can get great color and grow to immense size. This big green one I've had for years. I would say four to five as a guesstimate. It started off as a little three inch colony and it has grown huge. It's hard to even say how big this one is as it's kind of grown in onto itself. It's grown onto the back wall. I can't even pull this thing out of here without doing major damage to the coral. So it lives right here. And as you can see, it's right next to the surface where it gets all the light and flow, and it absolutely thrives right here. Toadstool leathers tend to look like their namesake, a big round top with a stalk going down to it. Pretty easy definition of a toadstool. But we can kind of get into some of the weird little differences that you're gonna start seeing in toadstools. Now, the first one that you're gonna notice is color. I'm in the process of coloring this one up. Like so many color corals out there, they are lighting and flow dependent for their color. I've got this one mounted up top in lots of light and hopefully we'll get some cool color out of it. So from that standard round top look, we go to the folded look like this big one has. Also notice the length of the tentacles. The last one had longer tentacles. This one has super short but super bright green tentacles. Similar in overall shape is this long tentacle Fiji leather. But here's where things start to get a little interesting. It's getting big, it's folding in on itself, but it has these really long tentacles on them. And the tentacles themselves don't have that much color to them. This one actually gets most of its color from the skin, which really isn't coming out on the camera at the moment. But what's really cool about this one is as the lights go out on the tank, the tentacles pull in, exposing that neon green skin. So this one is almost cooler at night when the tentacles are pulled in than it is during the day. But this is also one my clowns absolutely love because it has those long tentacles and they swim in it just like an anemone. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this new crazy mother. Next up is this Aussie devil hand or toadstool, depending on your point of view, but they do shit to the US as devil hands. And you can kind of see why. It's getting those fingers protruding up. But if you look closely at it, it's just the fold in the skin. We've seen the big ones that I've showed previously folding in. Well, these kind of fold up. So it's kind of like a mid in between the traditional devil's hand and your traditional Toadstool leather, it's a really cool coral, and if you take a look at it, it has long, thin polyps with super bright green tops. These are out of Australia, they're relatively easy to get, and the pricing's not bad on these guys. So, there's a lot of variety, but this one, Devil's Hand Toadstool 
leather I'm kind of up in the air on. And then of course, there's my true sarcophagin devil's hand. You'll see Lobo Fightum sold as devil's hand. But to me, true devil's hands are the sarcophytons, and these guys are way cool. It's got this kind of pinkish skin color to it, but what really makes it stand out to me are those fingers that come up. You can see it's super similar to a toadstool, but it gets these long fingers that come up with white polyps on it. They are the coolest thing. This coral is super healthy. It's grown amazing. It's easy to take care of. And look at it. Yeah, it's not neon green, but who cares? This adds so much cool factor to this tank. I absolutely love it. And this coral is from Vietnam. Next up is this green with green stock toadstool leather. These have been going around Colorado for years. Most local stores have had them or can get them. Usually somebody around is selling them. The reason is instead of having pieces that you have to cut off like standard toadstool leathers, these don't get big. As they grow, they drop off little babies. So a piece of the mantle will break off and fall off. So people have been turning these in forever and I'm sure that's where my original colony came from. They've been local, easy to get, and very inexpensive, and who can beat that color? So to propagate the species of sarcophytans that don't drop pieces of them off continuously, it's pretty easy. You can just take an X-Acto knife and cut a piece of the coral off and attach it to the frag plug. And in fact, that's the hard part. But then you end up with this kind of ugly looking toadstool leather with little pieces of it cut out. The trick is to cut a ring around the outside. So a big circular piece right off the outside. And then you cut that piece into lots of little frags. And then you end up with a normal looking toadstool leather and lots of frags. Along with propagation, we do need to talk about toxins. Because these are leathers and they do produce a toxin. Now they're not that toxic to your tank and especially if you run carbon or ozone, you'll probably never see any effects in your tank. But if you do cut one of these corals, I do recommend having carbon in the tank so it doesn't stress the corals around it. It used to be that people wouldn't even think about putting a sarcophytin or even any sort of leather in their SPS dominant tank because they were afraid of the toxins. I think at this point, I'm personally confident running plenty of leathers in my tank as long as I run a lot of carbon. I've personally never had one instance that I can say I've had coral die back because of the toxins coming off of a leather. So if you're looking for a coral that the fish are going to interact with in your tank that adds a lot of structural look to your tank. It's really tough to beat a devil's hand or toadstool leather. There's so many different types and strains that you can find something that not everybody has. They're for the most part easy to take care of. Really, I can't recommend these more. And that's why I've got seven in my main display. Thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.